peritoneal carcinomatoses, Wikipedia article audio. Peritoneal carcinomatoses is intraperitoneal dissemination of any form of cancer that does not originate from the peritoneum itself. PC is most commonly seen in abdominopelvic malignancies. Computed tomography is particularly important for detailed preoperative assessment and evaluation of the radiological peritoneal cancer index. The imaging findings vary from simple ascites to multifocal discrete nodules and infiltrative peritoneal masses. Various tumors and tumor-like conditions can mimic PC. A systematic analysis of CT imaging features is helpful to narrow down the differential diagnosis, staging, and effectively guiding the patient management. Introduction The peritoneum is a mesothelial lining covering the abdominal cavity and intraperitoneal organs. Peritoneal cavity contains a small amount of fluid which circulates under the influence of negative pressure generated by the diaphragm, gravity, and bowel peristalsis. This natural flow pattern determines the root of spread of disease processes within the peritoneal cavity. Peritoneal carcinomatosis is defined as intraperitoneal dissemination of any tumor which is not originated from the peritoneum itself. PC is one of the most common diffuse peritoneal diseases. PC is most commonly seen in abdominopelvic malignancies. Ovarian cancer is the commonest cause followed by colorectal carcinoma, pancreatic cancer, stomach cancer, and other malignancies including the hepatocellular carcinoma, gallbladder carcinoma, renal cell carcinoma, transitional cell carcinoma, endometrial, cervical cancers and unknown primary. Extra abdominal conditions such as carcinoma breast, carcinoma lung and malignant melanoma involve the peritoneal cavity through the hematogenous spread. Many non-neoplastic and neoplastic conditions may mimic PC, such as tuberculosis, splenosis implant, peritoneal lymphomatoses, pseudomyxoma peritonea and primary peritoneal mesothelioma. Appropriate determination of the extent of peritoneal disease is important as it changes the staging of disease, treatment plan, and prognosis. Therefore the role of radiologist in current scenario is to diagnose peritoneal carcinomatoses at an early stage which is important in choosing the candidates who are likely to benefit from surgery and to exclude diffuse peritoneal disease that mimic carcinomatoses. Peritoneal carcinomatoses without distant metastases represents loco-regional disease and calls for aggressive loco-regional treatment. Most CT scan findings are however nonspecific as both neoplastic and non-neoplastic pathologies of the peritoneum present as soft tissue masses, with or without ascites. Computed tomography provides direct visualization of primary and secondary peritoneal tumor. The detailed information about morphology, size, and location of peritoneal implants can be obtained. Multi-detector computed tomography remains the modality of choice for primary staging, especially in patients with poor compliance for diagnostic examinations providing a great deal of information about a large volume of tissue and permitting assessment of metastatic extraperitoneal disease. Role is limited in detection of early micronodulation. MDCT for diagnosis of peritoneal metastasis is highly specific, although sensitivity is low a detailed preoperative assessment of PC is essential to provide the surgeon information for evaluation of the radiological peritoneal cancer index. PCI is considered as an important prognostic indicator, also helpful in guiding therapeutic management. Several methods of classification have been used to investigate the extent of carcinomatoses. The peritoneal cancer index of Sugar Baker was chosen by an expert panel as a useful quantitative prognostic tool. 
it is the most widely validated and precise quantitative prognostic indicator. It was described by Jacquet and Sugar Baker. It assesses the distribution and implant size of the cancer throughout the abdomen and the pelvis quantitatively. The abdomen and pelvis are divided by lines into nine regions. The small bowel is then divided into four regions. Anatomic considerations The lesion size of the largest implant is scored as lesion size 0 through 3. LS0 means no implants are seen throughout the regions. LS1 refers to implants that are visible up to 0.5 cm in greatest diameter. LS2 identifies nodules greater than 0.5 cm and up to 5 cm. LS3 refers to implants 5 cm or greater in diameter. The objectives of this article are to present the pictorial review of the key CT imaging findings in peritoneal carcinomatoses, description about the common sites and pattern of peritoneal involvement and to discuss few of the PC mimicking neoplastic and non-neoplastic conditions. Pathways of Spread Peritoneum is a thin, translucent serosal membrane of mesodermal origin, covers the surface of the peritoneal cavity, mesenteries, and intraperitoneal viscera. Peritoneum is divided into visceral and parietal components. The visceral peritoneum covers the intraperitoneal organs, omenta, and mesenteries. The parietal peritoneum lines the abdominal walls, undersurface of the diaphragm, anterior surface of the retroperitoneal viscera and the pelvis. Point 12 The peritoneum subdivided into interconnected compartments by the peritoneal ligaments and mesenteries which determine the location and routes of spread of primary and secondary malignancies and infection within the peritoneal cavity. Normally a very small volume of sterile fluid is present in the peritoneal cavity. This fluid continuously circulates upwards to the subdiaphragmatic spaces where the subphrenic submesothelial lymphatics provide most of the lymphatic clearance from the peritoneal cavity. The cephalic movement of peritoneal fluid is augmented by the negative intra-abdominal pressure during exhalation and bowel peristaltic motion. Common Sites of Peritoneal Implants Initially. Peritoneal fluid accumulates in gravity-dependent spaces, the deep recesses of the pelvis and the lateral paravesical spaces and then ascends cephalad through the paracolic gutters reaches the subdiaphragmatic spaces. As the left paracolic gutter is shallow and discontinuous with left subdiaphragmatic space at the phrenicoccolic ligament, most of the fluid takes path through the right paracolic gutter. Completion of the circulatory pathway takes place caudally by redirection of fluid into the pelvis through the inframesocolic compartment 13. In pathologic conditions the excessive fluid collects in well-defined areas of stasis or arrested flow including the peritoneal recesses of the pelvis, the right lower quadrant, the superior aspect of the sigmoid mesocolon and the right paracolic gutter. In the cases of primary and secondary peritoneal malignancies, careful evaluation of the peritoneal recesses is necessary to locate occult disease for proper staging and planning for debulking procedures. Spectrum of Imaging Findings in Peritoneal Carcinomatoses Peritoneum can be involved by direct invasion, lymphatic paths, intraperitoneal seeding or hematogenous spread. Direct invasion can be contiguous or non-contiguous. Contiguous peritoneal involvement occurs from the involved organ periphery directly. Non-contiguous direct spread directed by peritoneal reflections, ligaments, and lymphatic channels. There are two main routes for lymphatic dissemination including the lymphatic system of the greater omentum and the right side of the subphrenic lymphatic system. Hematogenous route is the main route for primary tumor with a high grade of malignancy. 
It includes distant metastasis from malignant melanoma, carcinoma breast, and lung. Peritoneal seeding is predominantly directed by intraperitoneal circulation of peritoneal fluid. Ascites Constant circulation of peritoneal fluid allows transchylomic dissemination of malignant cells. Their deposition and growth occur at particular sites due to relative stasis of acidic fluid point one under surface of the diaphragm, omenta, recto uterine space, right lower quadrant, left lower quadrant and right paracolic gutter are prone for metastatic implants. Peritoneal carcinomatosis is the most common peritoneal neoplastic condition. It can give wide spectrum of imaging appearances ranging from simple ascites to large peritoneal slash omental mass-like deposits. Here we present pictorial review of key CT imaging findings with few of the PC mimics. Omental involvement Infiltration of the small bowel mesentery Serous peritoneal implants PC mimics The presence of ascites is one of the first indicators of peritoneal carcinomatosis. Loculation of acidic fluid is further a helpful feature. Ascites is seen in up to 70% of PC cases, although it is nonspecific. Subphrenic lymphatic obstruction and malignancy associated excess fluid production are the main causing factors for ascites. In some cases, ascites is little or absent. Omentum hangs like an apron from the greater curvature of the stomach and the proximal part of the duodenum, thus it covers the majority of the abdominal organs. Earlier omental involvement can be manifested by smudge pattern. In later forms, nodular pattern and mixed solid cystic patterns can be seen. Subsequently separation of the colon and the small intestine from the anterior abdominal wall with classic omental cake appearance takes place. Ovarian carcinoma is considered to be the most common malignancy producing omental cake. Fig 6 Peritoneal carcinomatosis in 78-year-old female with unknown primary presenting with omental smudge pattern and ascites. Fig 7. Omental deposits in peritoneal carcinomatosis. A 59-year-old male patient with hepatocellular carcinoma. Ascites with nodular omental deposits. B. Multiple large mass-like omental deposits with ascites noted in different patient with peritoneal carcinomatosis. Fig 8. Omental cake. Axial CECT image of a 55-year-old female patient with carcinoma stomach showing peritoneal carcinomatosis in the form of omental cake. The mesentery is a double-layered peritoneal reflection which suspends the jejunum and the ileum from the posterior abdominal cavity wall. Mesenteric involvement can be manifested by soft tissue tumor replacement of normal mesenteric fat, in the form of fat stranding, discrete or confluent nodules, mesenteric mass, and anomalous fixation of small bowel loops due to stiff and retractile mesentery produces characteristic pleated and stellate patterns. Presence of calcified deposits is pathognomonic for mucin producing tumor cell implants, such as mucinous cyst adenocarcinoma ovary. Small bowel obstruction is one of the most common complications of peritoneal carcinomatoses, can occur secondary to diffusely infiltrating tumor or focal tumor masses. Fig 9. Peritoneal carcinomatosis in 48-year-old male patient of hepatocellular carcinoma with retractile mesentery. Smooth peritoneal thickening and enhancement with central fixation of small bowel loops and ascites noted. Fig 10. A starry mesentery pattern of peritoneal carcinomatosis in a 65-year-old female case of carcinoma pancreas. 
B. Small bowel mesentery infiltrated with multiple micro and macronodules in a 68-year-old female case of peritoneal carcinomatoses with unknown primary. Nodular, nodules with a diameter 5 mm diffusely involving the serosa and subserosal fat can be seen, plaque-like. Confluence of multiple nodular implants forms irregular soft tissue thickenings, which coat abdominal viscera and Fig 11 A 52-year-old female patient, a follow-up case of mucinous cyst adenocarcinoma ovary Mixed solid and cystic peritoneal deposit with calcified mesenteric deposits and ascites consistent with peritoneal carcinomatoses Micronodules are difficult to access with imaging alone. Peritoneal walls It is typically found in subdiaphragmatic spaces of several centimeters. Morphological categories of those implants can be either solid, cystic, calcified or mixed ascites. Peritoneal thickening and enhancement are commonest findings followed by omental deposits and caking. PC must be considered as the first possibility in the presence of favorable imaging features even in the absence of detectable primary tumor. Fig 13 A and B large discrete and confluent solid mass-like deposits involving the omentum and pelvic peritoneum in two different cases of peritoneal carcinomatoses. Fig 14. Morphology of peritoneal deposits patterns in peritoneal carcinomatoses, a 59-year-old male patient a case of hepatocellular carcinoma with nodular mixed solid and cystic omental deposits, b. Solid nodular omental and peritoneal deposits in 48-year-old male patient, a case of hepatocellular carcinoma, c. Cystic peritoneal deposits, scalloping the liver surface, mimicking liver cysts in case of mucinous cyst adenocarcinoma ovary in a 52-year-old female patient. Fig 15 Case of Wet type Of tuberculous peritonitis A and B smudge pattern of greater omental involvement with smooth peritoneal thickening and enhancement Thickened serosal surface of small and large bowel loops with ascites. Fig 16 A 24-year-old male patient with fibrotic type of tubercular peritonitis, A. Marked ascites with centrally displaced bowel loops, mimicking peritoneal carcinomatoses. Splenic microabscesses also noted, B. Peripherally enhancing central hypodense mesenteric lymph nodes, c. Smooth peritoneal thickening and enhancement. Fig 17. A 32-year-old male patient, a case of abdominal tuberculosis. A and B ileocecal wall thickening, patulous IC junction, caseous mesenteric lymph nodes with ascites. B. Hepatic and splenic microabscesses Like tuberculosis, Crohn's disease also can result in granulomatous peritonitis. Smooth and regular peritoneal thickening is more in favor of granulomatous peritonitis. The majority of splenosis implants are found after splenic injury by trauma or after splenectomy. Splenic fragments can become implanted anywhere in the abdominal cavity. With imaging splenosis appears as dense well-circumscribed lesion with attenuation and enhancement patterns similar to splenic parenchyma. Diffuse peritoneal involvement can be seen in high-grade lymphomas, lymphomas complicating AIDS and Burkitt lymphomas. Diffuse peritoneal thickening with multifocal mass and nodules are characteristic imaging features. Ascites, mesenteric and omental infiltration also can be noted. Presence of lymph node involvement, encasement of the mesenteric vasculature, producing the 
sandwich. Sign, homogeneously enhancing thickened bowel wall with aneurysmal dilatation of the involved segment and splenomegaly are associated findings which are helpful in differentiation. Tuberculous peritonitis. Fig 19. NHL in a 17 year old HIV positive patient. A irregular homogeneously enhancing wall thickening involving the iliacecal region with aneurysmal dilatation of involved segments. B. Hepatosplenomegaly with hepatic metastasis. Fig 20. Case of gastric lymphoma. A and B concentric wall thickening with homogeneous contrast enhancement, involving the antrum and pylorus of the stomach without causing gastric outlet obstruction. C soft tissue mass encasing the mesenteric vessels without obstruction. Pseudomyxoma peritonea is a rare complication of mucinous tumors of appendiceal or ovarian origin that results in peritoneal and omental implants. The CT signs of pseudomyxoma peritonea are not specific, combining peritoneal effusion, peritoneal nodules, and invasion of the greater omentum. Gelatinous deposits scalloping over the hepatic margins, loculatidocytes, and curvilinear calcification are pathognomonic features. The pressure of gelatinous material prevents the bowel loops floating towards the anterior abdominal wall which may be useful sign in differentiating pseudomyxoma peritonea from ascites. Mesothelioma is a rare primary tumor of the connective tissue, originates in the serous membranes of the pleura, peritoneum, or pericardium. Peritoneal involvement is reported in 25% of cases. Imaging features include ascites, diffuse irregular nodular peritoneal thickening, invasion of omenta and mesentery with the formation of omental cakes, and mesenteric masses and bowel wall thickening. Coexistence of pleural abnormalities with positive occupational asbestos exposure history in absence detectable primary tumor goes more in favor of mesothelioma. The extent of carcinomatoses represents one of the most important prognostic factors. In patients with PC accurate preoperative assessment is essential to determine a roadmap for choosing an optimal type of treatment. Various primary and secondary peritoneal conditions present with spectrum of imaging features. Analysis of peritoneal involvement patterns are helpful in narrowing down the differential diagnosis. Peritoneal carcinomatoses should be considered if ascites present with irregular peritoneal thickening, nodular omental and peritoneal deposits, omental caking. Attempt should be made to search for primary site. Tuberculosis can present in dry, wet, or fibrotic forms and can strongly mimic peritoneal carcinomatoses. Ascites with smooth or irregular peritoneal thickening are common findings. Presence of hepatic or splenic miliary microabscesses, splenomegaly, inflammatory thickening of the terminal ileum and cecum and caseous lymphadenopathy in appropriate clinical scenario support abdominal tuberculosis. Pseudomyxoma peritonea should be kept in mind if hypoattenuating deposits are scalloping the visceral surface of intraperitoneal solid organ margins with calcified peritoneal and slash or omental deposits. Presence of nodular peritoneal slash omental slash mesenteric deposits in scenario of old splenic injury possibility of splenosis should be considered. Lymph node involvement Encasement of the mesenteric vasculature, producing the sandwich. Sign are helpful in differentiation of peritoneal lymphomatoses. Knowledge of the peritoneal anatomy together with an understanding of the mechanisms behind malignant tumoral seeding of the peritoneal cavity aids in the interpretation of often complex imaging appearances in peritoneal carcinomatoses. A systematic approach is important for accurate assessment.
splenosis implants, peritoneal lymphomatoses, pseudomyxoma peritonea, mass like, confluence of multiple nodular implants, usually in the pelvis leads to formation of tissue mass that can reach sizes. Malignant peritoneal mesothelioma Summary Reference